Hi, I'm Matteo, editor of this episode of Synthesis Workshop. In today's Research Spotlight episode, we have the pleasure to have Yannick Brager here with us. Yannick studied chemistry in Switzerland, where he achieved his bachelor and master degree at ETH Zurich. After a research experience in Germany, in the Reuters lab, he started his doctoral studies under the supervision of Professor Bill Morandi at ETH. Today, Yannick is going to give us an overview on his latest work published in JAX dealing with an elegant ketone isomerization reaction. Welcome Yanning, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Matteo, for your kind introduction. In this presentation, I would like to showcase the work that we've been doing in the Morandi group on the isomerization of cyclic ketones to enable late stage molecular editing. Our work revolves around the concept of reach isomerization, a powerful tool for selectively relocating specific functional groups within densely functionalized substrates. This approach enables us to harness abundant feedstocks like sugars and steroids to access unique chemical entities with unconventional functionalization patterns. Notably, these one-step isomerization reactions offer a more efficient and sustainable alternative to de novo synthesis, providing a step and atom economic route to complex molecules. In this context, molecular editing approaches have demonstrated their utility through a series of remarkable reports, a few examples of which I will highlight here. In 2020, the Wendland group pioneered a photocatalytic reaction manifold, enabling a transformation of readily available monosaccharides into rare biologically significant monosaccharides through selective epimerization. While this example showcases the synthetic potential of late stage epimerization reactions, achieving reach isomerization of functional groups presents an even greater challenge as this would necessitate the reversible formation and cleavage of robust bonds. Alkene chain walking, a rare example of such a process, typically involves the sequence of beta hydride elimination and insertion reactions facilitated by transition metals. Attaining an analogous process of ketones, a ubiquitous and highly versatile functional group, would mark a significant milestone in synthetic organic chemistry, especially given the absence of transition metal mediated elementary steps for isomerizing ketones in a manner akin to alkene chain walking. The Dong group was able to circumvent this challenge by devising a Catalani type process enabling access to ketone isomers through a kinetically controlled transformation. This elegant method, although limited to 1 2 transpositions, prompted our hypothesis whether we could develop a reaction that can reversibly reach your isomerized ketones and thus truly open new synthetic avenues. Knowing that we would have to utilize a mechanistically distinct approach, we turned to the literature and found it in the wilgerod kinder reaction. In this reaction, a mixture of acetophenone and sulfur is refluxed in a secondary amine as a solvent, typically morpholine, which causes the carbonyl group of acetophenone to migrate to the terminal position, where it is oxidatively trapped as the thioamide. Reports show that the carbonyl can migrate over longer carbon chains as well, implying that a carbonyl chain walking mechanism might be operative. These reports led us to three key hypotheses. Firstly, subjecting cyclic ketones to these reaction conditions could remove the thermodynamic trap imposed by the thioamide, potentially enabling a reversible ketone chain walking reaction. Secondly, we considered the possibility of employing sulfur and secondary amine in catalytic amounts for the same reasons. Finally, we were conscious that, as the reaction would be reversible, a suitable driving force to favor product formation would be necessary. Thus, we targeted synthetically relevant ring systems in which certain isomers would be favored thermodynamically. We were intrigued by generally disubstituted cyclohexanones as one of the substituents must occupy an axial position. Consequently, 3,3 geminally disubstituted cyclohexanones are more thermodynamically stable than their 2,2 and 4,4 disubstituted counterparts due to a reduction in the number of 1,3 diaxial interactions. We could show this by calculating the ground state energy of the three possible isomers of dimethylcyclohexanone and comparing them with each other. As expected, 3,3-dimethylcyclohexanone 1b is thermodynamically favored due to a decreased amount of 1,3 diaxial interactions. 1c was calculated to be disfavored mostly due to steric clash of the carbonyl with the methyl groups in addition to an increased number of 1,3 diaxial interactions. Overall, a distribution of 1 to 6.2 to 0.3 for these three isomers was calculated, 
providing a reference for our screening efforts. With this in mind, we initiated our screening efforts focusing on 4,4-dimethylcyclohexanone and conditions involving catalytic amounts of sulfur, one equivalent of water, terbutanol as a solvent, 60 degrees and a reaction time of 24 hours. Initially, investigating different amine catalysts, we found that many secondary amines are able to catalyze the desired transformation, with pyrrolidine performing the best in terms of getting close to the desired equilibrium distribution between 1A and 1B. Interestingly, 1C could not be observed in the reaction conditions. Since we were targeting an equilibrium, we imposed that when 1B is exposed to the same conditions, the same isomer distribution should arise. After fine-tuning the conditions by lowering the sulfur catalyst loading, increasing the temperature, amount of water, and lastly by switching the solvent to isopropanol, we could finally observe the same isomer distribution starting from either 1A or 1B, corresponding to the expected isomer ratio based on our calculations. Under none of the tested conditions was the formation of 1C observed, nor did we observe any conversion of 1C when exposed to the reaction conditions. Together, these results imply that the ketone chain walking process is reversible, thermodynamically selective for the 3,3-disubstituted isomer, and not applicable to the formation or reaction of sterically encumbered ketones such as 2,2-dimethylcyclohexanone. This selectivity profile is reminiscent of that observed in enamine catalysis, which is typically ineffective with bulky substituents adjacent to the ketone. After the reaction optimization, we tested several monosubstituted cyclohexanone derivatives and compared the obtained isomer distribution. For R equals terbutyl, from both the 4 and the 3 substituted isomer, we obtained practically the same isomeric distribution, though the 2 substituted isomer did not show any conversion. For R equals methyl or phenyl, the same preference for the 3 substituted isomer can be observed. Interestingly, Formation of the two substituted isomer could be observed from 3 and 4 methyl cyclohexanones, and for both 2 methyl and 2 phenyl cyclohexanone, conversion to the other isomers could be observed, albeit in a limited fashion. Collectively, these results show us that alpha unsubstituted cyclohexanones rapidly isomerize under our reaction conditions. Moreover, isomerization of alpha substituted cyclohexanones is shown to be sluggish if the substituent is small or does not occur at all if the substituent is large, or if the ketone is alpha disubstituted. With this understanding of our reaction kinetic selectivity profile, we thought to apply this methodology to more complex targets, as we anticipated our mild reaction conditions to be compatible with a range of substrates. Various derivatives of the Wieland Miescher ketone, which has been extensively used as a key intermediate in natural product synthesis, were investigated. Keto alcohol 5A reacted smoothly to provide 2 oxoisomer 5P as the major product, with no other ketone isomers detected. Diketone 6A also gave the product 6P as the only other observed isomer, underlining the critical role of the kinetic selectivity of our method, allowing us to obtain a desired product in 44% isolated yield. Likewise, the benzoate ester and the cis-fused diketone smoothly gave the two oxoisomers, albeit with lower thermodynamic selectivity. We were pleased to see that functional groups like silyl ethers, spock protected amines, as well as alpha beta unsaturated esters were tolerated under our conditions. Thermodynamic selectivity was rather poor in the latter case, but here we also observed isomerization of the double bond, and as a result, purification proved to be particularly challenging. We therefore collected only a small sample for full characterization. Furthermore, Phthalamides and a biotin derivative isomerized smoothly, albeit with moderate thermodynamic selectivity. We then went ahead and tested structurally related hyosh parish ketones under our reaction conditions. Interestingly, in this case, we observed three isomers. We hypothesized that 15C and 16C are formed due to the unique structure of this bicycle compound, reducing the steric hindrance of the secondary carbon center just enough to enable migration of the ketone. Next, we performed the reaction on several naturally occurring steroids, such as androstenolone, mestenolone, androstenedione, and allopregnanedione. The isomerization reaction gave a single isomer in all of these cases, proceeded with good thermodynamic selectivity, and in the case of 19A and 20A, excellent kinetic selectivity, as these substrates contain another ketone which remains untouched. 
The selectivity is particularly imperative in the case of 20A, because if the acetyl group were able to undergo reaction, this would likely lead to the undesired occurrence of a Wilgeot kinder rearrangement on the acetyl group, forming an amide species on the terminal position and ultimately inhibiting the desired isomerization process on the other ketone. The synthesis of 20B has previously been reported in an eight-step sequence starting from pregnenolone. The isomerization is achieved through several synthetic steps, and further steps are necessitated by the protecting group strategy and redox manipulations employed to navigate the challenge of achieving selective isomerization. Our synthesis of 20B takes either a single step from commercially available allopregnendione or three steps in total from pregnenolone. In addition, we are now able to access 5B from Wieland Miescher ketone derivative S1 in fewer steps than reported previously, while also avoiding the use of stoichiometric reagents such as lithium aluminum hydride and pyridinum dichromate. Thus, this truly highlights the synthetic virtues of our new ketone isomerization, especially given its distinct selectivity profile. To illustrate the practical aspect of our method, I'm showing a typical reaction setup on a Wieland Miescher ketone derivative depicted in a scheme on a scale of 1 millimole. A 20 milliliter vial is equipped with a magnetic stir bar and charged with the start material. Then 6.4 milligrams of sulfur is added, followed by 2 milliliters of isopropanol. Then 90 microliters of water is added using a Hamilton syringe, followed by 16 microliters of pyrrolidine. The vial is then stirred and heated for 80 degrees over 24 hours. Analytical HPLC analysis of the crude reaction mixture shows the two ketone isomers in a ratio of 1 to 1.2. Most ketone isomers can be separated by preparative HPLC, but in some cases the polarity difference between isomers allows for a separation using flash column chromatography. Having established a protocol to achieve the chain walking isomerization of ketones, preliminary mechanistic experiments were performed. Based on studies on the Willigaut Kindler reaction and related transformations, we surmised that the reaction likely proceeds through the formation of an enamine intermediate. To test this hypothesis, 4,4-dimethylcyclohexanone-1A was submitted to the reaction conditions by using deuterated water as additive and perdeuterated methanol as the solvent. This led to deuterium incorporation detected at all methylene carbons in both D1A and D1B. Since this includes both the methylene carbons adjacent to the quaternary carbon, this further affirms the versatility of the system. Subsequently, this reaction was repeated but without the addition of sulfur. No isomerization was observed and deuterium incorporation was only detected alpha to the ketone, but not at the beta methylene carbons. This result reflects the fact that sulfur is necessary to isomerize the putative enamine intermediate. On this slide, I will briefly discuss our working hypothesis for the mechanism of this reaction. It's important to note that our hypothesis draws heavily from proposed mechanisms in the existing literature. We should emphasize that the wilgo tindler reaction remains a subject of limited understanding and alternative mechanisms have been suggested. As previously mentioned, we hypothesized that the initial step involves a reversible reaction between the secondary amine and the ketone, yielding anamine 2A as the intermediate. Subsequently, we postulate that this enamine species reacts with sulfur, giving rise to its sweater ionic compound 3A. It's worth noting that sulfur readily dissolves in basic aqueous or alcoholic solutions, forming various polysulfides. However, the precise speciation of sulfur compounds under our specific reaction conditions remains unclear. 3A then undergoes an intramolecular nucleophilic attack on the aminium species, leading to the formation of intermediate 4A from which pyrrolidine can potentially be eliminated. Following elimination, the proposed intermediate 5 is symmetric, allowing pyrrolidine to attack from either side. Importantly, assuming that all elementary steps in this mechanistic proposal are reversible, we propose that the reaction can proceed in a retrograde manner until the ketone is regenerated. In summary, we developed a ketone chain walking isomerization reaction that operates under mild conditions is reversible and uses cheap and benign catalysts. We elucidated a stereochemical model for understanding the thermodynamic and kinetic selectivity of our process, enabling us to edit a variety of synthetically relevant compounds, including steroids on a late stage. With this, I would like to conclude my presentation. 
First and foremost, I would like to express my gratitude to Dr. Benjamin Baval, who spearheaded this project and whose brilliant mentorship was pivotal throughout as he carried out the reaction optimization and most of the work on the steroids. I would also like to thank Dr. Ori Green for his support and Professor Dr. Bill Morandi for his guidance of the project in valuable discussions. Finally, I would like to thank you, Matteo, for your kind invitation and everyone for your attention. Thanks for the great talk, Yannick, and thanks to the audience for your kind attention. Stay tuned for more videos on Synthesis Workshop. See you next time. <laughs>